Also, in 1670, the British would establish the first colony in what would become the Carolinas. And they would establish that colony right here in Charlestown Landing, just outside of modern day downtown Charleston. And uh, we're going to explore the grounds here and uh, actually even check out a active archaeological dig and uh, see what they're finding and hopefully get a glimpse into what uh, life would have been like in this uh, early colony here. Of course, before the Europeans came over to settle, the Native Americans settled here centuries before the English colonists founded Charlestown. And I thought this was pretty neat. You can kind of see, looking through this glass panel here, uh, what a uh, Native American village would have looked like just before us. So one of the priorities when you establish a new colony is uh, some sort of defense. The colonists were aware that the Spanish hostile Native Americans and predatory animals threatened their safety. Well supplied by the Lord's proprietors, they came to Carolina prepared to defend themselves. And I thought this was pretty interesting. This is a picture of archaeologists excavating here in uh, 1969. And before us is the recreation of the uh, Palisade Wall here. So one of my favorite things about this site so far is that archaeologists are still actively working. So let's head inside and see what uh, we can learn inside this uh, active archaeological site. Wow. Check this out. These would have been long, skinny two and four acre lots. Everybody got a little bit of waterfront and then they mostly go interior. There are two different building episodes on top of each other here and two for this structure as well. The deepest and oldest architectural element that we have is a post and trench. Um, I only get five feet of it, but they dug a big tr trench and put one foot square posts in it. At the base and at the top, these little tokens that have King Charles II on them were found. Okay. And we think that that was likely ceremonially placed. This structure here, which the majority of these excavations is looking at, had at least a brick foundation. We're not sure how high those walls were. It could have had a wood frame on top of it. Um, and it could be one or two stories, we're not sure. We've excavated most of this away and the chimney fall, but this is what's left of the hearth where the fireplace would have sat. Wow. I think at that same time that they put the hearth in, they also laid in this poured lime floor that we see over here. So this is some sort of special use. They're not very common. In fact, this is the oldest example that we know of in the southeastern United States. You normally only see them in buildings that are like a winery or a dairy. Um, we do have dairy related artifacts, but they're kind of on the normal household level. Not what you would need like a special room for. Um, and what we have that looks more like industry commerce level for the amount of artifacts that are coming out are lots of wine bottles, drinking tankers and mugs, and even fancier like glass wine goblets. Mm -hmm. So we have everything from Chinese porcelain, mm -hmm. English ceramics, German stonewares from uh, mugs and tankards. These are Dutch uh, Delftwares. Mm -hmm. This is a Spanish made milka, likely made in Mexico. And then these are locally produced by enslaved Africans. So they were able to get everything right away. So that was pretty cool. Um, I'm not really into archaeology, as weird as that sounds, being into history, but uh, the work being done in there was eye-opening, and it kind of really helps paint the picture of what life was really like here. And uh, I mean, they're finding everything from eggshells to fish scales to birdshot. I mean, just super in-depth, and uh, it was really cool to see that process. 
And of course, when you see uh, 17th and 18th century weaponry here, we're gonna have to explore it. Here is a swivel cannon, and it's mounted on the uh, palisade wall here. And how this would work is it can be controlled by one soldier, and uh, he can reload it just like this. And when he needs to fire, he can easily swivel it, light his fuse. It's really cool. So this structure here, this is representing what was called common lodging. And common lodging was for indentured servants and enslaved Africans who were the backbone of the new colony. Again, pretty good visual, just to get a little insight into the life here. These structures are very simple, just wood. There's no insulation or anything like that. You get some cold nights here, I'm sure it would be uh, pretty brutal and try and stay warm even with the fire here. Just giving you uh, a look at some of the ingenuity here. They didn't really use nails. They're using like these wooden spikes to kind of hold the, uh, I guess these would be rafters in place. Just uh, here's a few more. It's pretty interesting. So here's some of the uh, devices here that would have been used for punishment. And something that's interesting is in early Charlestown, the majority of prosecuted crimes involved slander against the government, actions that endangered the colony, or threatened its profit. And here's some of the methods here. Oh yeah, now we're talking. So here's a uh, representation of some of the uh, defenses that would have been here at Charlestown. We're essentially on the edge of an empire. War between Spain and England ended 10 years before the founding of Charlestown, but the hatred and mistrust between the two empires remained. So let's have a closer look at some of the uh, defenses here. Now these aren't the original earthworks. Um, they obviously reconstructed these to give us a visual, but this is the general area that they uh, discovered that these defenses were. Now, something else I wanted to point out, you see the platforms here that the uh, cannons are on. Well, they built those because the cannons are so heavy that if it rained or if it was muddy or the ground was soft, the cannons would sink. And you wouldn't be able to uh, move them to reload them and things of that nature. So they built these platforms. And uh, you can see the cutouts here, that, which allowed the cannons to fire. Now, these are pretty massive pieces, so it would definitely take uh, several soldiers to uh, load and fire this thing. If you've been following the channel for any length of time, this is definitely uh, right up my alley. Uh, these type of fortifications, especially earthenwork forts. Um, I don't know. I just really enjoy exploring them and just becoming part of them. This is pretty cool to me too. So this is just a block of wood underneath the barrel here. And uh, when they wanted to have the muzzle point down, they would put more wood and in turn, this end would go up. And when they want the muzzle up more, they would remove the wood or add a smaller piece. So check this thing out. So this is, this ship is called the Adventure. And it is a replica of a 17th century trading vessel. The British called them Ketches. Uh, that's K-E-T-C-H. And this would have been manned by a crew of 10. So let's hop aboard and uh, join my first mate, AKA the wife. <laughs> yeah, really cool. And there's the first mate. Wow. So this thing's pretty cool. This is how they used to get water out of the ship. And uh, so apparently water would seep in. Remember these things are made of wood. And they'd pump the water out from below by using this. That's, pr that's pretty cool. And uh, here's your colors. And here's your rudder control. So you would turn this and uh, you would achieve your desired direction. Of course, in conjunction with your sails there. And something that's pretty cool too is, this is obviously a replica, but uh, it's life size. It's not scaled down at all. So what you're seeing is the uh, size of this uh, type of catch, this trading vessel. All right, let's head down below. See, one stair at a time. <laughs> cool. So, here's a room. I believe the park ranger said this is the uh, captain's quarters. 
and here's your hole where a lot of your goods would have been kept. Just giving you an example of the uh, size down here. I'm standing straight up and my head just misses these beams here. So just a little over six feet down here. But uh, you can imagine, again, the water seeping through the sides here. That's why they had that pump. Uh, but yeah, just a really cool visual. I really enjoy this. So that was Charlestown Landing. I'm really glad we decided to stop here. We were on our way out of Charleston and decided uh, to swing by here after seeing it on uh, Google Maps, and I'm really glad we did. Uh, seeing that active archaeology site was, was a really cool experience and just goes to show you how in-depth uh, some of the process is here and uh, how they're still learning new things and finding new things every day. So that was really cool to see. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, like always, we'll catch you on the next one.